All right. Hello and welcome to this exciting showcase session, a wonderful new format uh, that we want to be highly interactive. So with that, um, I'm now delighted to welcome our first uh, panel member, uh, Billy Lau. Bill is an instructor in the Division of Oncology at Stanford University uh, School of Medicine. His research focus is on leveraging genome technology for cancer detection. Take it away, Billy. Thanks. Hi. Um, so our group is really interested in using liquid biopsy for longitudinal monitoring of cancer as well as for early cancer detection. Um, just as a brief review, um, liquid biopsies are commonly um, defined as um, taking a blood draw from a patient and, taking a, and examining the constitutive components inside in order to give either a diagnosis of cancer or any kind of um, disease condition. In our case, we're specifically interested in looking at methylation marks. Um, methylation marks are specific um, mod base modifications that can exist on cytosines, and these are reflective of the underlying transcriptional programs that are present in cells. So in the top panel, what you see there, um, you see a normal cell has a specific pattern of um, five MCs in front of a promoter indicating that tumor suppressor gene is, let's say, active. But let's say this pattern changes, this is reflective, could be reflective of a malignancy, and you can see that the tumor suppressor gene could be silenced, and this could be a pattern that you can detect through liquid biopsy research. Um, so in the past year, this, um, the thing on the left panel just came out in genome medicine a few weeks ago. Um, we've developed a protocol using Oxford nanopore sequencing, whereby we can sequence at very high throughput um, cell-free DNA using the Oxford nanopore platform in a highly multiplex fashion. We de developed a protocol that increases the throughput by over an order of magnitude, and we can go down to even lower than um, one nanogram into sub to, um, hundreds of picograms of input. Um, this correlates to probably maybe a mil to half a mil plasma. Um, since then, we've extended the study to look at population cohorts. So on the right is a, is a new study that we're embarking on where we have sequenced a large case control cohort of early stage breast cancer patients as well as um, uh, negative controls and also validation cohort as well for the purpose of early breast cancer detection. Um, to implement um, this early um, detection um, classifier, we employed a couple of different um, omic modalities. The first is methylation, as we said before. You can um, train classifiers to look at the aggregate methylation profiles in case and control and compare um, unknown cases to it in order to derive similarity scores and call whether those could be case control. Similarly, you can also use alternative modalities such as fragmentomics, whereby the fragmentation patterns of the reads themselves can be indicative of disease states. And this is something that we described in the genome medicine paper that we, we just published. We can use um, these uh, fragmentation patterns fit to mixture models and um, develop classification schemes as well. Um, lastly, you can put these two omic modalities together with ensemble learning. Um, and on the right here is some brief preliminary results on, um, on a validation course showing that we can um, detect um, breast cancer at, um, at a UDIN index of about 70% sensitivity specificity, but obviously for diagnostics, you can tune to wherever you want. Um, so that's it, um, uh, what our lab does. I'd like to thank um, all these people that are involved in the study and the patients that made the study possible. Thank you very much, Billy.